So with the new NVIDIA 3000 series coming out, probably the number one question I've been getting, is my CPU fine? Do I need to upgrade? I did a whole big video on this on what CPUs to get, but if you have an existing CPU now that you wanna keep, is it gonna be enough? Are you gonna get bottleneck? Let's talk about some of the most common and popular CPUs that people have of older generations, and we'll see if it's gonna be enough. So let's get started. Hey guys, so if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, leave a comment below, let me know what CPU you're working with and if you think you're gonna keep it if you get the new 3000 series. All right, let's get right into it. I've had so many questions where people ask that basically, is their CPU gonna be okay if they're gonna get a 3070, 3080, maybe even 3090? So we're gonna answer some of those questions. I'm gonna go through some of the more recent and a little bit older, really popular um, CPUs that people have. If I don't mention the one that that you have don't worry maybe leave a comment below i'll try to get to it i'll try to see what's going on um, generally let's cover a few basics for a gaming cpu the reason why intel over the last few years has been popular um, even as amd grew more in popularity with more cores is that the clock speed um, for example if like an intel you know 10 900k is running at 5.3 gigahertz generally that's going to perform better in the game than something that may be running at only like 4.3 gigahertz just because for years and years um, since intel was on top for so many years games were kind of more optimized for that sort of high clock and everything like that that multi-core hasn't really been optimized for games. Recently, there are more games that take advantage of more multi-threaded CPUs, but in general, the higher clock that you have, the better it's gonna be. It's the reason why Intel isn't completely wiped out. I mean, AMD's been doing amazing. Um, I'm a huge fan of what AMD has done to bring a lot of competition into the market, but it doesn't negate the fact that a lot of Intel CPUs, like the 10900K, 10700K, as well as the older ones, 9700K, things like that have been fantastic at gaming because they clock so high so having said that another point to remember is that the clock speed of the, your cpu and the cpu itself is going to be much more important when you're playing at lower resolutions like 1080p and you're trying to go for like 144 hertz a refresh rate 240 maybe even the new 360 hertz refresh rate which is pretty crazy that's coming out within the next few months as well the reason for this being is that at this lower resolution, a lot more stress is put on the CPU itself. Now to contrast, if you're playing something like 4K, there's gonna be a lot less pressure on the CPU and there everything is gonna change over to your GPU. So that means if you're planning to game in 4K, while there may be cases while you're still gonna have a difference between higher clocked and lower clock CPUs, this difference is considerably less to almost non-existent in many cases. A really high-end CPU you, like let's say a great gaming CPU like a 10 900 K may pretty much be a wash even with a lower chip so at 4k you're gonna have a lot less pressure on your CPU then basically all the power is sort of going to your GPU and it really won't matter as much now as you go down the line with the different resolutions in between 1080p and 4k that shift also starts to happen so now if you're playing in 1440p most of the pressure the graphical pressure is still gonna be on the GPU side but here the CPU does play some importance. So if you wanna eke out every little last ounce of performance, you definitely also wanna get a nicely clocking and more powerful CPU. Same thing in ultra wide. Ultra wide is sort of in between that 1440p and 4K somewhere. Um, the CPU of course still isn't as important, but it does play a role in certain games. Then of course, as you get back down to 1080p, then the CPU is gonna be considerably more important just because all that stress is being put on the CPU and a little bit less on the GPU. So having said those two points, um, hopefully now you guys understand sort of like at the very basic level why certain CPUs are good for certain resolutions. So let's get down to if your current CPU is going to bottleneck a 3070, 3080, 3090. Now according to Nvidia themselves, um, on Reddit they had a little ask me anything where they answered questions. People asked if any lower tier CPUs were going to bottleneck sort of the 30 series GPUs. Their answer was yes and if you can try to get the most powerful cpu that's available so first let's start at the very top let's say if you're going to play worst case scenario 1080p really high refresh rates this is where your cpu is going to be stressed the most if the cpu is going to be good for this it's going to be good for 1440p it's going to be good for 4k 
1080p, like we mentioned, is where the CPU is going to be stressed the most. So let's start at the top with the newer CPUs, AMD and Intel. Now, if you want to eke out every little ounce of performance for getting value and, and price to performance, the Intel 10900K still kind of ekes out ahead in most cases in most games at 1080p. Likewise, the ones that's similar like the 9900K. Having said that, AMD has made tremendous advances sort of in their, their clock speeds. Great example of this is the 3950X. Even though it's 16 cores and it absolutely destroys most of the other Intel chips, including being very competitive with the 18 core 10980XC, it actually clocks really high um, and it's actually really good for gaming. Now, it's not necessarily the same level as a 10900K, but it's really getting close there. And that's where we start going into sort of like a value proposition. It's only a little bit more expensive or close to in price, but you're getting 16 cores versus 10. So here we're talking about the very top CPUs. If you have a 3950X, a 10900K, I definitely wouldn't worry, especially with the Intel side, you'll 100% be great for gaming. Now, if you have something like the 3950X, gaming performance is going to be almost pretty much just as good, and you get a huge advantage of having a tremendously powerful multi-core CPU. Now, any of the other more modern, really high-performing CPUs, I think you're also going to be perfectly fine, even at 1080p. This is including the more newly released 3900 XT, even some of the other Intel chips like the 10600K, the 10700K, those all clock really, really well. Even the new Ryzen chips that have the XT moniker at the end that they recently released, they're meant to clock higher. And of course, later on, Ryzen 4000 is going to be coming out. Apparently, it's going to clock even higher. Then I think they're really going to give Intel a very hard time in terms of top performance, in terms of clock speeds. Intel barely is holding on to that lead. But I think after Ryzen 4000, we may see that lead disappear. So remember, those are sort of on the horizon as well. So enough talk about the newer and higher end CPUs. CPUs. So let's talk about older CPUs that you may have and whether you should upgrade them. Are they going to bottleneck the 3070, especially at 1080p or 1440p? So let's start with AMD. Um, I think if you have anything from like the first generation Ryzen, like a 1700X, even 1800X or, or 1600, most likely you're going to want to upgrade um, those early chips. They just don't have sort of the, the higher clock performance that you really need, especially at 1080p. If you're planning to play, like ultra wide or 4k you may be okay for a little while but you may be a little bit bottlenecked even in that case if you're playing at higher resolutions just because these processors are definitely a good deal older if i were you if you want to stay within the amd family I would upgrade minimum like a 3600, 3600X. If you can try to get like a 3700, I think that's gonna pair really nicely. And a 3700 will work great even at 1080p. And of course, remember you can eke out a little more performance if you get something like a like a 10600K that clocks a little higher or something like that. So first generation Ryzen, if you plan to get a 30 series GPUs, these are top of the line, brand new, fast GPUs. I would definitely upgrade it. Now the second gen Ryzen, um, even the 2700X, which, you know, it's a great value. It performed really well. I think it's getting a little bit older and you're definitely going to bottleneck the new 3000 series GPUs, especially at 1080p, just because the 2000 series Ryzen's, they just don't clock as high as the newer Ryzen chips and especially not as high as some of the newer Intel chips. So if you have something, anything like a 2700X or below, I would definitely look to upgrade. Um, it, once again, if you're doing 4K, you may be okay for a while as i mentioned most of that pressure is going to be on the gpu but anything else i would look to upgrade those and now if you're running anything from the newer ryzen 3000 series i, I would say that anything from the 3600 up you'll be absolutely fine with the 30 series Anything lower than the 3600, I think you're going to run into more bottlenecks, especially at 1080p. But in most resolutions, if you have a 3600, you want to get a 3070, I think you'll be fine for now. Of course, you could always get a little more performance, a little more frames per second at 1080p by getting a higher clocking chip, be it from the newer Ryzen's or Intel like we spoke about. But I think anything 3600 or above, you'll be absolutely fine. And then the last class of processors that maybe less people will have are going to be the Threadrippers. If you have anything from the newer generation you're going to be absolutely fine they made a lot of great improvements to the threadripper that way the newer threadripper can pretty comfortably play games of course it's not meant for that at all but but you can do it it's more of a content creation type of processor 
anything below the newest uh, generation Threadripper. I would not use for gaming. The last generation Threadrippers really weren't that great for gaming at all. But, um, but if you have something newer and you want to play some games, it's normal. A lot of people who do content creation may game on the side and they want just one system. You can definitely do it with the newer Threadrippers. Now let's talk about the Intel chips. If you have anything from the mainstream, like from the 6700K and up, most likely, at least you'll be okay in the beginning in terms of 4K, 1440p. At 1080p with a 6700K, you're definitely going to start to see some bottlenecking. Um, once again, if you want to improve that, you got to jump to maybe the 9th or 10th generation Intel chips, the higher one that you can get. Um, even the 7700K, um, even though you can overclock it to 5 gigahertz, it's a great performing CPU. Um, it's only 4 core, 8 threads. You may start to run into some bottlenecks in certain games. So if you have any of these two, you'll be fine to use them for now especially if you're doing higher resolutions but just keep in mind if you want to game at 1080p you're going to need a little bit newer more powerful cpu just so you can eke out every ounce of performance out of these new 30 series gpus now as you step up to like the 8700k i really wouldn't worry about it as much i think even at 1080p 8700K is a really nice sweet spot. I mean, you can clock it really high. It is a six core, 12 thread processor. So I think you'll be more than fine in many games that start to take advantage, not only of higher um, core counts, but also of sort of higher clock speeds. Um, so 8700K is definitely still a very good CPU. And even something like the 8600K or 9600K, uh, maybe if it's a little bit overclocked, if the game doesn't really take advantage of multiple cores, it's more like a single threaded high clock type of game. I think even the 9600 will be fine. Of course, the 9700K has been a great gaming CPU. It clocks really high. It's nice and simple, eight cores. I think you'll be especially fine at 1080p. And I really don't think bottlenecking is going to be much of an issue with the 9700K. And then, of course, with all the other newer Intel CPUs like the 10600K, 10700K, I think you're going to be absolutely fine, especially at 1080p, um, not to mention the 10900K. Basically, the strength of these Intel CPUs is that something like 1080p high refresh rate gaming they clock really high they usually have a pretty decent amount of overclocking headroom so anything from these newer generations i think you're going to be a little bit safer and then of course let's not forget x299 sort of what used to be the high-end enthusiast you know desktop platform it's still really cool and surprisingly a lot of people still have stuff like 7800x 7820x 7900x not to mention the newer you know 10980xe uh, 9940 like the 10980xe even though on the x299 front and x99 intel sort of lost that crown as the ultimate performance and you know a little bit because of price and how amd came up it kind of made that market really bleak it doesn't mean that these aren't some great performing cpus just remember because of their mesh architecture instead of their ring architecture like you would find in a z390 a z170 those are better for gaming these are meant more for like content creation and, and rendering and things of that nature but still, they clock pretty high, and of course, generally, they're going to be multi-core, at least like 8-core. Um, you know, of course, you have 12, 14, 16, and 18 cores. So if you have any of these, including some of the lower end 7800X, 7820X, it'll be the same story. You're not going to get the most performance at 1080p, but they're going to be able to manage sort of running these GPUs um, pretty well. I think you're still going to get great performance, but you will start to bottleneck these GPUs. I think the only way, if you're doing Intel, to get the top performance and not bottleneck these gpus is to go with something from like the 10th generation you know 10 900k or something like that but if you're running these x299 processors in general you should be okay you're going to see probably a little bit less frames per second than somebody on one of the other higher clocking mainstream platforms but a lot of them are still great chips and you can use them for content creation and things of that nature and it's a very mature platform so you're less likely to have as many issues as something that's newer so if you do a mix of gaming and content creation these still perform pretty well and a surprising number of people still have them and use them every day. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know down below. I try to cover some of the more popular CPUs. If you have a CPU I didn't mention and you would want some question answered if you think it's going to be adequate or not, um, leave a question down below. I'll try my best to answer it. Remember to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you guys on the next video.